iPhone 13 on us for every customer. Current, new, everyone to show the love. How about sushi? I just had sushi for lunch yesterday. Yeah. How about tacos? Automatic emergency braking. One of six advanced safety features standard on every 2022 Chevy Equinox. Find new technology. Find new roads. Chevrolet. <laughs> Hello, everybody, and welcome to A Balanced Life with Dr. Jackie. As always, this day is my favorite day, the day that we have to gather together to learn from one another. And let me tell you, our guests today will not disappoint. We're talking all things family and how do we nurture and prepare our boys for the future. We're going to be joined today by Stacey Owens of Creating Z Charter Schools, Aisha Pugh of AMP. Dondre Whitfield, author of Male Versus Man, Pastor J.T. Johnson. And let me tell you, everyone, today is the day where I want you to sit back, take your notes, and feel like you can really be involved in this conversation and dialogue. As we're moving into summer and we're figuring out not only what to do with our kids and who to send them to, some of our kids need a little bit of a tune-up. And who better to help than family? Let's invite in all of our guests. Hello, everyone. Hello. 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 Hey, now let me ask you guys this question. Can you remember when you were sent off for summer because you needed a tune up? A tune up. Stacy, tell us what that was like a little bit um, being sent away for summer and having to have that family tune up. Well, you know, I didn't really get sent away for summer, but um, as far as my mama sent me was down the street to the church for vacation Bible school. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> but that still was a tuning up for um, just resetting and just figuring mm -hmm. out how are you going to spend your summer in a child likes way, making yeah. sure that you're still able to engage in the things that children engage in. Uh, awesome. I was fortunate with my with my mother that she allowed me to experience that fullness of just being a child. I didn't have any worries. I didn't have to be sent away for any um, tune-ups. She got her break by making sure she kept me engaged in different activities that were age appropriate and that would continue to stimulate my mind as we went through the summer. Thank you for sharing that information. Pastor JT. Yes. <laughs> Well, I guess I will uh, concur with Dr. Stacy. Um, <clears throat> you know, I started preaching when I was nine. Uh, so a lot of my summer, I spent running summer youth revivals. Um, <laughs> so I was actually uh, working. So Stacy, while uh, you were sent to vacation Bible school, I was probably some of those vacation Bible school speakers. Um, <laughs> But speaking about tune-ups, uh, with my mom being a uh, retired educator, um, it wasn't the summer tune-up. It was every single day. Um, and I remember it like it was yesterday. And I say this, um, that my fourth grade year was my best and worst year in school because my mom was my teacher. I didn't have a break. Uh, I couldn't say that the dog ate my homework because mama knew we didn't have a dog. Um, <laughs> so I think that summer, um, getting away to work on messages that I would be preaching uh, actually was a break for me, not necessarily for her. <laughs> wow. All right, Aisha Pugh, tell us all about it. 
Yes, yes, I surely will. You know, I'm a Southern girl. I grew up in Alabama, not the country parts of Alabama, okay, because everybody thinks that Alabama is so country. But I did grow up in Alabama. And the thing is, we went to our grandmother's house. We also went to vacation Bible school as well and did that. But we were at my grandmother's house. My mom worked every day. Uh, pretty much she was a nurse. So she was pretty busy doing that in the daytime. And we would just go out out with my cousins and hang out. Like she said, in the summertime, we would go to vacation Bible school, but at 12 o'clock noon, you better believe my grandmother had all of us in the bed sleep because she needed her recharge herself. Okay. So at 12 noon every day, we were going to bed. We had our lunch. But as I got older, my mom did put me in enrichment programs in the summer that I, I hated going to it. But I, I thank God now, as I look back, because she just wanted me to, you know, engage in things and and learn things before I went to the next grade. But overall, I had a I had a great, you know, great time um, doing those things. But that's pretty much how my childhood went. <laughs> now y'all must be the goody two shoes group, and I am so excited. I can't say I was that kid. Dondre, tell us all about it. <laughs> uh... Am I allowed to say? Uh... <laughs> <laughs> I, I grew up I grew up in a very uh, turbulent environment and so when you're when you grow up in in a turbulent environment and you grow up without particularly as a uh, as a as a young boy um, when you grow up in these turbulent environments and you don't have a model that you can safely mirror you begin um, being fathered by the streets. So many of our brothers who, you know, join gangs, which is really in their mind like a club, to join what they're looking for is a model that they can mirror. And so too often, too many of us get wrapped up in following those kinds of models that lead us astray. And so uh, I remember having one um, summer of going away for the first time in New York, they had a, uh, a program called Friendship air fund and they would take kids to upstate uh new york and it was there where i learned how to swim um in a in a lake for the first time um sleep away for the you know for the first time so many of the experiences that i had at camp away at camp um, allowed me to really sort of put together this vision that i have of building my own man camps where i'll be able to give young males the kind of information and instruction that i feel like is necessary in order to matriculate into manhood because too often we go without that information and instruction and everyone around us is wondering why we're underperforming it's not that we're underperforming it's that we're underdeveloped in key areas particularly due to a lack of that information and instruction and you bring up a valid point. I love what each of you said, because family takes on different looks. Family can be shaped by your environment. It can be shaped by the home that you were raised in. It can be shaped by any number of things. And as I'm listening to each of you talk, something comes to mind as it relates to what is a family. If we had to define family today, Stacey, what would you say constitutes a family? Because not all of it is nuclear. Wow, I was gonna say that's a loaded question because typically when you think about what is family, um, people like to go to you know mother, father, sister, brother. But in this day and time, with especially with a lot of the kids I serve, family can consist of anybody who is there in your life that is helping you to grow into the who you are supposed to become. My teachers, myself, we become part of that unit. Um, as stepping in for some of our students in um, in that family role when they are missing some of those elements. So family just looks different for everyone. So that sense of family, it does. It can look different from everyone. And we often have talked about on our show, families oftentimes, as Dondre mentioned, can be gangs. He said very eloquently that you've been fathered by the streets. And then we have some kids that have grown up in the foster care system who sometimes are placed and sometimes are not. And they have this different idea of family. 
Pastor JT, when we talk about how the church grooms us and prepares us, these small units over summers, over after school programs, programs, over morning programs, give us this sense that sometimes we have play cousins, we have, you know, play sisters and brothers. How do those types of relationships when you're young help you understand and identify the, the care and the kindness and the nurturing that can happen in family when you're young? Right. <clears throat> and that's a great question. Um, I honestly believe uh, following, you know, Dr. Stacy, I, I believe that that uh, picture takes me back to the old African proverb about the village. Right. And many of us, especially when I go back and I think about church, um, there are a lot of people that may come to a church and they may be in a, a single parent home. And then possibly you are a child um, who you don't have siblings, or maybe there's a family that has relocated, especially uh, in our day and age now where there are so many people um, that are moving um, and you come into a city and the first place that you may land in is in a church. And so there are a lot of relationships that are built there. And I look back over my life, you know, there are a lot of people, especially being the kid preacher that I was, there's a lot of people in the church that I grew up in that I'm still in connection with today. Um, and and we, we call each other brothers and sisters while there is no blood you know, uh, connection. Uh, we are connected uh, while we went to the same church and many of us have grown apart and many of them now actually are members of my church, you know, but uh, thinking about that, there are so many people that have the opportunity uh, to be shaped and to be molded um, in the communities that they are part of. And when I speak about communities, even that word community is expansive because you think about uh, the school community. Uh, again, Speaking about my mother being a retired educator, I actually saw firsthand what outreach looked like because my mom took it upon herself when she was getting me school supplies. She had three students that she always made sure that they had school supplies as well. And she followed them because of um, they were missing those pieces of what a traditional family looked like. And so she stepped in and uh, she kind of took them in as her own. So even that educational community, um, that church community, um, you know, there are some kids that will go to your boys and girls clubs over the summer, uh, the YMCA's over the summer, and then they develop relationships there. Um, and I always look at that word family, you know, even you think about the word ships, friendships, relationships, Family is the only one that ends with I-L-Y, and that's I love you. Uh, so anybody that really has true love for you becomes a part of your family. I love that. I-L-Y, I love you. I think that's something that we'll take with us as we prepare to go into a break. And when we come back, I want to talk to Aisha Pugh because she is a mom of two boys. And I know that things look different when you're raising sons. I'm looking forward to this very stimulating conversation when we're back after the break. Verizon just gave us all a brand new iPhone 13. We've been customers for years. We got iPhone 13s too. Switched two minutes ago, literally right before this. iPhone 13 on us on any unlimited plan for every customer. With plans starting at just $35. All on the network more people rely on. Love our new Alexa. It's a Buick. Yeah, Alexa. Buick. Alexa. It's a Buick. It's an Alexa. It's a Buick. It's an Alexa. Coach, that's a Buick. That's an Alexa. The Buick Enclave with available Alexa built. -in. Welcome back, everybody, to A Balanced Life. And as you can tell, some kids need a tune-up. I was one of those kids. When I was a kid, I had a smart mouth and I had sassy ways. And let me tell you, as an adult, I'm still pretty quick on the wit. So I have to catch myself. And being able to go to grandmother's house, auntie's house, those older women had a way of helping me engage and identify and understand how to be a appropriate in various settings. And so as we're thinking about what we're doing with our kids this summer, as we're talking about how we're raising our young boys and our young girls, this is one of those conversations that will allow us to really use this as a guide to say, who do we want 
our children to be around. I'm excited about this next conversation that I'm going to have with Aisha Pugh. I don't get often a time to talk with a mom who's raising boys. Hey, Aisha. Hey there. How are you, Dr. Jackie? I am doing very well. It's so good to see you. Thank you for um, coming on today. And, you know, I have tons of questions. So I grew up in a family where I have two sisters. There are no boys. And I did have boy cousins, but they were all older. So we didn't spend a lot of time together. Now, you're married. You've got two sons. What does sense of family look like for you in your unit? So in my unit, first of all, let me just say, you know, in this house full of testosterone, trying to navigate as a woman, um, you know, sometimes, you know, it gets a little, you know, a little tough. Um, but I just think the most important thing for us with our boys is just to teach them, um, just uh, just give them a balance, right? Um, a lot of times, often in the household, as far as men and boys are concerned, they're taught that, they, you know, they have to be the provider. And, and that's absolutely fine. But just as a mom of boys, like I want them to also just understand that it's way more than that. Um, you know, I can't teach them how to be a man, I guess, per se. You know, my husband does a great job um, role modeling that. But I think the spiritual side, the mental side, um, the emotional side of things is what I like to give uh, to my boys so that they understand that all of those pieces are important in a family as well, because you do need that. Um, so I think with my boys, in terms of giving them a good bit of all of that and teaching them, you know, those things as well, not that you got to be so hard all the time and you can't you know, you can't cry and you got to just suck it up and, you know, those kind of things. Um, you know, I, we, we, we definitely don't go about teaching our boys those things. We, we want them to be men. Absolutely. But, you know, again, you know, the education component, the spiritual component, the, the mental balance, you know, all of those things are important for me um, to be able to teach my kids as a woman in the household so that when they get wives and have daughters or whenever they grow up, that they are in touch with all of those things and not not just I got to be the man, just got to just provide financially. And that's just it. So um, that's just kind of what, how we are in our household with our kids. Well, I thank you for sharing that, because oftentimes two-parent household, single-parent household, grandparents raising grandsons, whatever the case may be, there are these various outlets that boys need. Now, girls mm -hmm. go to mentoring camps. Yeah. Girls will find time to go or come to your school related to how to put their face together, how to have etiquette, and do mm -hmm. these things. Your boys are engaged in a lot mm -hmm. of activities. Mm -hmm. What types of things, as they were growing up, did you find for them to do as our parents are taking notes and they're trying mm -hmm. to figure out it's safe now. I mean, we're coming through this pandemic and it's okay yeah. to give them a little bit of room to yeah. get out and really explore all the things you've been teaching them in the home. Yes. So our boys are, they are very, very busy. One one important thing was we watched out for what they were really into and what they were passionate about. So my boys, they are completely different, total different opposite ends of the spectrum. So one of my, my sons, my oldest son is into music. So he, we really invested in him, um, you know, financially, um, as well as making sure that he had you know, all of the tools that he needed. So he sings, um, you know, he majors in music. So growing up, those were the kind of programs we kind of geared him towards because that's what he liked to do. Initially, he actually liked to do, um, uh, he was into animals and things like that. So we looked into camps and things like that to put him in um, to help kind of further those passions. So he's, you know, just released a single. Um, he's So he's doing well with those things. So we really just kind of tuned in to what they were interested in. My other son, on the other hand, is into sports. Um, so Dawson goes to every football camp known to man. Um, so we really honed in and, and make sure he has all the training and things that he needs uh, to help him with his sports. Now for mama, you know, my main thing is making sure those academics are on point. So I absolutely also invest in those things as well to make sure on the home side of things that they're getting what they need and the support that they need in, in, in that as well. But I think it's just paying attention to what it is that they like to do. And it's OK to let them try other things. We've done acting and um, karate, you know, all those things. But once they get a certain age, we just kind of really just paid attention to what they were passionate about. And then we just went with it. So they're always busy. I mean, they are always doing something. It's literally true for us. I, I don't know if they have time to do other things because they are always 
you know, doing this or that. So that's, those are the things that we, what, what we've done in our, in our home. I appreciate that. A couple of things as you were talking that really resonated was that how you and your husband are driving that ship. Yes. Oftentimes in homes, kids run to parents. Mm -hmm. And I think that you have set a good balance for us. You know, the times that we have talked to you, you've shared about how mm -hmm. that balance in your home plays a really good part in making sure that not only do you and your husband have time together, but also the kids have activities that engage them as well. So I want to thank you for being so open and transparent about why it's important that even as a couple Couples need to keep them at also at the front of the family so that you can bring that type of balance into that as well. Yes. Yes. Thank absolutely. you for sharing. Stacy. I have a question for you because you're in a school environment and you do so many things for your children. When you're getting your kids as you're releasing them into summer, how do you prepare and help them? to find readiness to engage outside of your school? Because kids spend more time at school than they do at home with other people. So you're really like a family for a lot of them. One part of my engagement is I continue to offer summer programming during the summer to give them options so that they can stay engaged um, during the summer with us. Um, we also try to set boundaries. Um, one of the most important things that I think we can do for children is to teach them that it is okay to just walk in the life of being a child. Unfortunately, I serve a, a population that deals more with um, what I would call parentification, where children cross over into those roles of the caretaker, and they are dependent on um, taking care of their siblings. They are dependent on um, carrying some of the emotional baggage or support that their parents may have to carry. And so their their boundaries get crossed and they sort of lose insight on how to just get out and socialize with other kids. So I like to set boundaries with those students and help them to understand that this might be what's going on in your world, but what can we do just for you? What are some things that you can work on that will improve you or allow you just to be you, be a child? So in teaching and helping them identify how to be children, how do you help parents understand that as well? Because we go through all of these stages of, you know, mom wanting this young child to be the head of the household when he's only in second or fourth grade. And then you have them doing all the grocery shopping. You have them learning how to pay the bills. You have them running up and down the street, running the errands. And then sometimes people, you know, get this thing in their head that this child is supposed to be the be all to end all to help mama soothe all of her issues and concerns. How do you help parents un help them see that this is a kid and should be able to live a kid's life? So that is such a tricky situation. And it's a thin line that you have to walk along because one, we have to figure out why are we even in this situation? Are you paying the bills or keeping the siblings because your mother have to go to work? If that's so, let's have the conversation with mom to talk about, you know, what extracurricular activities or what else can we do to bring in support for the child so that they can have those opportunities to do the childlike things. Uh, a lot of times with the parents, we have to point out the, the impact that it's having on the student. So, for instance, I had a young lady who started having a conversation about maybe she should just get pregnant at the age of 15 because she felt like she was keeping all her siblings anyway. Um, and she could not have that conversation with her mother because it was a touchy situation every time they tried to talk about it. So I became the mediator for that situation. And I just had to help her to see, um, I know you're dependent on her, the young lady to help you. And I'm not saying children can't help with what's going on in the home, but at the same time, what else can be done? Do you have any relatives that can come in and provide some assistance so that we can alleviate some of the stresses that are being placed on the child? Sometimes for some parents, it may just be, um, I just, they just don't know. They don't know what they don't know. Um, for some, it can be dependent upon the household. If we're in that setting where um, I guess for lack of a better word, we say a poverty mindset, and that's just a mindset they have, then we have to have those conversations to help give them another frame of reference to um, look at. Thank you for sharing that. School should be resources. And 
for those of you who are in that space, your kids are going to summer school, they're going to camp, they're going to vacation Bible school, they're going off to all of these amazing experiences that will help them grow. Discovering how to have appropriate conversations is one of those dialogues that can, you know, as Stacy said, it's a thin line. Aisha, can you talk for just a moment about how you keep that door open for your boys to be able to come to you and your husband to talk to you just about anything? Well, I don't know if you can tell by now. We, I, I'm definitely a communicator, <laughs> and so are my kids. Um, to be honest with you, growing up, you know, I honestly, um, in all transparency, grew up in a household where my mom was like, "I am the mom, and what I say go right." Um, and so, with that being said, when I had my own children, I wanted to make sure that I was able to allow my kids to be able to respectfully voice how they felt about things. So for, for a long time, we have definitely opened up the lines of communications um, so much sometimes where I would be like, oh my gosh, am I, you know, allowing them to be too open? Um, and it's again, not to the fact where they're disrespectful or anything because, you know, they're not at all, but I'm so open with my children from the time they were very young. I, I just feel like it's important for you to allow kids to express themselves as well, because there are people too. They have feelings um, just like everybody else. And I couldn't do that. I had to hold it in and tell my cousins or my sister <laughs> or my brother, you know, how I felt about whatever my mama said. But I think it's just important to realize that, you know, they have feelings. They have things that they need to share. They have things that they need to talk about. Now, their kids, don't get me wrong. Now, sometimes I have to, you know, get them in line and be like, okay, now that's too much. But in the same token, I think it's important for us to be able to communicate with our kids. And the lines of communications for in our household is definitely open. We talk to them. In fact, I even tell the teachers every year I email all of the teachers and I say, I just want you to know that my kids talk to me. So they're going to tell me, you know, their side of things, if anything has happened. And that's with anybody. So. Um, so, yes, I think it's just very important at an early age to go ahead and, and establish those lines of communications. And that's something that we've definitely done and allowed our children to be open with us about um, things that bother them and you know things that we need to um, um, correct or get going or advice or anything like that. Thank you both for sharing. As our children are being nurtured and are growing, it's oftentimes not easy for them to navigate the world in which they live. And I, I'm going to ask this question because it's a delicate question. When it comes to family, being able to pour into your kids, who can pour into your kid? And do you draw the line at certain people like, no, you can't talk to my child? <laughs> For Jeremy, <laughs> y'all want to jump in because I can honestly say I, I, I've been in that space where I could talk to certain aunts. I could talk to certain uncles and my mom was like, we're not talking to them anymore. And then she would give me this long list of reasons. And it was just sort of like these weird things that happened to them when they were growing up that they kind of carried on to us as kids saying, yeah, no, that's not the best person to ask for advice in this area, this area, this area. But if you want to talk to them about these choices and those choices, then by all means, go ahead and talk to them. Either you have any of those types of um conversations or stories related to who can pour and who shouldn't pour? Well, I was a, a single parent. So with my son, and I was a single parent with a challenging son. So everybody didn't want to pour in him. <laughs> so, um, but I needed, uh, he needed um, to be able to hear from other men who look like and sound like him, who can give some sound advice. So I was one of those parents who I reached out within family and within our community resources to find mentors and people who could understand the disabilities that he was dealing with. I didn't put a limit on who can share into my village until you became toxic. Now, if I got wind of the information that you were sharing was a little toxic or um, something that would take him or even one of my children down a path that they shouldn't go down it would be at that time that i would set a limit because my children too i taught them at a very early age you can tell me anything so the first person that has to do the poor i felt is myself and then i had to teach them how to listen to and receive from others but also be able to follow that gut to where somebody is saying or doing something that is 
uncomfortable or give you an uncomfortable feeling, one, you can always come back and tell me. And so my kids were the type who would come and tell me just about anything that was happening in their lives as well. Now, if it created a sense of discomfort, then at that time we would start putting limits on, okay, well, they're done pouring. Let's make sure that, you know, we stay connected to the things that are healthy to us. Thank you so much for sharing. Aisha? Yes, I think for me, it's just a matter of, you know, being aware um, of who your children are in communication with and who they are talking to. Now, if, you know, if I'm looking at your lifestyle, um, even if you're not, you know, if, you know, people that we know and 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 that just doesn't align with what um, our moral, morals and values and standards are, then no, I don't want you pouring into my children, um, you know, because I think like you know, just like you said, you know, those things can be toxic. Um, you know, however, I thank God we've been truly blessed um, um, to be surrounded about uh, around people that are positive um, influences, um, you know, from um, in our community, our, our friend group, our sororities, the fraternity that my husband's in. So it's we, we, we've been blessed. So, yeah, I'm, we're, we're all watching. Now, we're not perfect people by, by any means, but we do try to live, our, you know, a, a decent, you know, godly life. We really do. So, um, yes, I am particular about um, who they are going to be speaking with when it comes to advice. Um, and they know that. They, I feel like they're pretty grounded in what's right and what's wrong and who they should be asking and who, you know, who they shouldn't be. So, yeah, I, I think it's just a matter of being aware of whom your children are speaking with and whom they're talking to as far as, you know, them being poured into and making sure you as the parents, uh, you know, make make sure you have that final say or that final core, <laughs> so to say. <laughs> Um, like your <laughs> okay, she said that final pour. Let me tell you. So when we come back after the break, we're gonna talk to the guys because being able to pour into a boy or a young male is much different than being able to pour into a young woman. When we're back after the break, we're gonna talk to Pastor JT and we're gonna talk to Dondre Whitfield in a moment after the break. How about sushi? I just had sushi for lunch yesterday. How about tacos? Automatic emergency braking. One of six advanced safety features standard on every 2022 Chevy Equinox. Find new technology. Find new roads. Chevrolet. It's time to be smart. Roland Martin's doing this every day. Oh, no punches! Thank you, Roland Martin, for always giving voice to the issues. Look for Roland Martin in the whirlwind, to quote Marcus Garvey again. The video looks phenomenal, so I'm really excited to see it on my big screen. I support this man, Black Media. He makes sure that our stories are told. See, this is the difference between Black Star Network and Black-owned media and something like CNN. I gotta defer to the brilliance of Dr. Carr and to the brilliance of the Black Star Network. I am rolling with rolling all the way. Honestly, on a show that you own, a Black man owns the show. Folks, Black Star Network is here. So I'm real uh, revolutionary right now. Wow. Rolling was amazing on that. Hey, hey, I love y'all. I can't commend you enough about this platform that you've created for us to be able to share who we are, what we're doing in the world, and the impact that we're having. Let's be smart. Bring your eyeballs home. You can't be black on media and be scared. You dig? Welcome back, everyone, to A Balanced Life. I hope that you've got your pen, your pad, your digital device, and you are taking copious notes. I am learning so much about how these levels of engagement and who we introduce our children to plays a very big part in how they mature. I want to bring in now Dondre and Pastor JT, because each of these men have resources, books, and have you know been for us a wealth of information as it relates to how do we engage boys? How do we engage men? How do we help us, help us, help us, teach us how to turn some of those corners where we always just want our boys to stay babies, 
We don't see them growing up into this man. We oftentimes don't see them turning into something other than what we believe they should be because we're mom. We see them with different eyes. So, uh, Dondre, in your book, Male versus Man, you talk openly about there being two distinctive differences. So please enlighten us, sir. Yeah, you know, this is such a healthy conversation for us to have. And, you know, in the previous segment, you know, Sister Aisha and Sister Stacy both spoke about um, some very um, key things. Sister Aisha uh, was talking uh, about the fact that, or pointing out the fact that she understood that she can't teach her son how to be a man. And I stated that in my book. And at the time, it was very controversial um, because we're not used to our sisters aren't used to hearing that because so often they are left with the assignment, the responsibility of holding the family together when the man has abandoned his post. Um, and what you're, as a mom, your job is to create a beautiful human being. A man is supposed to create a responsible man, right? So if I wanted to become a pilot, I would have to come under the tutelage of a pilot. Anyone who has never been a pilot is disqualified from teaching me how to be a pilot. And it's not good enough for you to just simply have been a passenger or a past passenger on a plane. You can't teach me how to pilot a plane simply because you've flown on one. So what's the point? Our sisters have to give over the reins to our brothers in order for us to properly matriculate our males into men. Now I can hear the sisters right now. Well, what if his father isn't in the picture? This is where you partner with a brother like a Dondre, with a brother like a Pastor Jay, with a brother like Brother Roland, right? And so you have all of us in our periphery we have solid men who will begin to mentor and grab that young brother by the hand or the shoulder to say, this is the way to go, right? And, and it's extremely important because as a mom, look, you've carried a child for nine months. You are the first nurturer, the first caretaker, the first teacher of your child. So when you see your child in pain, the first thing that you wanna do is to stop that pain. It's one of the reasons why they don't allow moms to go with their son to boot camp because they're teaching your son how to be a, show, a soldier that is going to experience some very specialized conditions on the battlefield. And the things that it's going to require in order to create a soldier are going to be extremely painful for you to watch. So at times with my 13 year old son, there are times where my, my wife wants to save him from the accountability of his drill instructor for manhood. And I have to lovingly but firmly say to my wife, babe, not now. I got to raise my son because if I don't raise my son, the street will try to raise him for me. Ooh, now, now, that, now <laughs> let me just pause for a second. Because when you say the streets will try to raise him for you, those are the things that we're trying not to have. And this is not right. anything against gangs. This isn't anything against groups or organizations that are really in that space of trying to lovingly show our boys how to live. Now, Pastor JT, in your work and in your book, you also talk very clearly about how do we prepare and engage ourselves for the readiness to be a good mentor, to be a good male model, for these boys to follow. So as Dondre said, oftentimes there is not a man in the picture that's biological. How do you groom and prepare men to step into that role to come alongside another young man? Right, <clears throat> that's a great question, uh, Dr. J. And uh, Dondre, brother, slam dunk. I love everything you said. Um, but to answer your question, I think that the best mentor was first, a great mentee because I believe that a man who has been properly mentored, he has cut his teeth. Um, he has bounced back from uh, some life traumas that did not take him out. 
um, but helped bring out the best in him. And typically it was another man that came alongside of him and helped grab him and bring him along. And I believe that again, the greatest mentor uh, was also first a great mentee. Now to be a great mentee, the only thing that needs to happen is, is you must be teachable, you must be trainable. And that's something that happens in life. And most of us have been taught, most of us have been trained through our past experiences. And so in our past experiences of brokenness, making the wrong decisions, um, maybe not being the best that we could be, we have now learned how to be who we are today by overcoming some of the challenges that we were able to overcome. One of the things that I will say in a challenging moment, in, 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 in a sense, is that I would love for our brothers uh, to have the same call or the same assignment, um, if I can pick right up where Dundre left off, as the streets. Because there is a term that is popular now in um, our culture about the streets are calling. Well, one thing about the streets is that they never stop calling. And they're always looking for new recruits. But one of the things that I believe that happens that impacts our culture and impacts our world specifically is that we won't pick up the phone to call mm -hmm. until the situation is out of control. One of the things that I heard um, uh, Sister Pugh say that I, I, I loved, um, she said that they pay attention to their boys. They pay attention. So she saw that one of her boys loved animals. And so when she saw that, uh, she put him in things that would bring forth that out. But then she saw a switch and she saw music. And so then she shifted and put him in music oriented things. Then the baby boy, he is a sports fanatic. He loves football, but she paid attention. So many times I believe that there's a picture that we want our children to be, but we are reluctant to listen to hear that they don't want to be the picture, but there's something inside of them that they are trying to create. And I believe that it is a, a foregone conclusion in our community that we want all of our young boys to have a football. We want all of our young boys to have a basketball. But amazingly enough, 67% of male CEOs are over 6'4". So just because a young boy is tall, that doesn't necessarily mean that he needs to be in a gym. He very well could need to be mentored by an entrepreneur. So I believe it's that being cognizant, being aware and making sure going back to Dundre's point that you align them with like minded people that will guide them in the track that they would want. So, no, it may not be a male in the home, but if you are connected to a man allow that man uh, after he has been vetted and after he has been proven uh, not by what he can wear or not by what he can drive or not by what he can buy, uh, but that he has been proven uh, by his moral standards. He has been proven by what he stands on. Um, he has been proven by what he does and not ju just by what he says. So I believe that those are some of the things uh, as we look for mentors a mentor is going to always present himself when the mentee is ready. Quite interesting. Mm. Dondre, when you think of alignment, how does that match up just in life in general? Where we talk a lot about balance. We talk about people finding their space and their zone. But sometimes it's hard to get you together when you've been through so much. How do you align yourself with the things that matter for your life as a man? What a uh, great question, Dr. J. Um, and I just want to um, speak to something that uh, Pastor J said, you know, about we want our boys to have basketballs and footballs and, um, you know, and all those instruments of sport, because those are the things that we see that are glamorized, you know, in our communities and in society at large. Um, but, you know, I've often been asked the question of when should I start teaching my son how to become a man? When should I give him these the, the tenets of, of manhood? And I, my question, my question often back to that is, well, what was the age that you put a ball in your son's hand? 
See, if it was okay for you to put a basketball in your son's hand once he started walking, why isn't it okay to begin teaching him the principles of what manhood uh, are at, at, at the same age? Because if we strengthen his basketball skills, and I, and I always talk about this because Pastor Jay talked about mentors. I always, when I get in front of my young, uh, uh, young brothers or my young nephews, my bonus nephews, I ask them, name me all your favorite basketball players. And they name me a litany of them. And, and there's no wrong answer. The LeBrons, the Kobe's, the Michael Jordans, there's no wrong answer. That's all the right answer. My question to them is, what do they all have in common? And they name off quite a few different things from talent to, you know, uh, grit to, you know, all of these other things, which is absolutely true. But the one thing that they're always missing is, is the fact that these great players would not have become great if they didn't have coaching. From the time that they played AAU to the time that they played high school basketball, college basketball, to the professional ranks, they all had coaching. And what I point out to them is, is that the higher that you go in your level, you don't get less coaching, you, you get more coaching. Why? Because there's more at stake. When you become a professional, you've got a shooting coach, you've got a defensive coach, you've got a strength and conditioning coach, you've got a, 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 a nutritionist, which is a food coach, you've got a mental coach, you've got all of these coaches in order to make you a great basketball player, but who is your coach in order to make you a great man? And to further drive home the, the, the answer to your question is all of us as males before we became men and let me let me uh really drive this home because i don't want our audience to get confused there's a gigantic difference which is why i wrote the book male versus man there's a gigantic difference between being a male and being a man males look to be served men look to be of service there's a gigantic difference so the if you want to insult me the b word for a man is simply referring to him as a male because what it speaks to is my anatomy if i'm born with this body part that's why on my birth certificate it either says male or female god made me a male but he gave me the assignment to become a man right mm -hmm. and so as a male there are certain stories that we believe about ourselves and it takes a mentor to come in to change the story that we believe about ourselves so that we believe in a new story and begin investing in that story. And the story is that I have been created to become a man to be of service to humanity. And that's where all of that ties in. Wow. Thank you so much for sharing. I'm, I'm gonna say this, as we're going into this break, Everybody that's watching, I know that the texting, the typing, the reaching out on social media is going to be like, oh, my God, who knew there was so much into discovering how to turn that corner from being male to man. When we come back after the break, I want to bring our entire group in after the break so that we can hear a few of their tips and takeaways just to get you started this summer when we're back after the break. love our new Alexa. It's a Buick. Yeah. Alexa. Buick. Alexa. It's a Buick. It's an Alexa. It's a Buick. It's an Alexa. Coach, that's a Buick. That's an Alexa. The Buick Enclave with available Alexa built in. Pull up a chair. Take your seat. The Black Tape with me, Dr. Greg Carr, here on the Black Star Network. Every week, we'll take a deeper dive into the world we're living in. Join the conversation only on the Black Star Network. Verizon just gave us all a brand new iPhone 13. We've been customers for years. I thought new phones were for new customers. 
We got iPhone 13s too, switched to Verizon two minutes ago. Ours were busted, and we still got a shiny new one. Check it out. So wait, everybody gets the same great deal. I think that's the point. iPhone 13 on us for every customer, current, new, everyone, on any unlimited plan, starting at just $35. All on the network more people rely on. Welcome back, everybody, to A Balanced Life here at Backstar Network. I am, oh my God, my mind is blown with the wealth of information that we are discussing today. Because all of us, in some way, shape, form, or fashion, will be put into that place of either discovering who to mentor, how to mentor, discovering whether or not we have the capacity to mentor girls, boys, or co-ed. And for our guys who are out there watching, Thank you for being a part of this conversation and dialogue. I want to bring our group back in together because I'd like to hear from each of you a tip or takeaway that you would like to share with our audience to get them moving in the direction of how they fit into their family and focusing in on helping young men grow up to be amazing civic engagement leaders, entrepreneurs, or whatever passion that they have. JT. <laughs> All right. Um, the look on your face, like, call me. I got this. <laughs> I, I, I got you. I got you. Well, I'll start us off and I'll, I'll, I'll keep it short. I think one of the things, um, and, and I I just love the thought um, that our, our sister, Sister Pew, said about um, being aware, um, uh, paying attention. And I think that's one of the things that we have to get back to. Um, our children cannot afford to be raised by a telephone, by a laptop, by a tablet. Uh, we have to be present and we have to be aware. And I think it's in that moment um, that we won't have to see or hear the cry for help. Uh, we will already um, acknowledge that there is a need for something different. Uh, so I think that's one of the, the main things that I would like to offer um, to our uh, social family, our e-family, uh, is uh, be aware. Um, and and it's, it's your house, uh, it, it's your village. Uh, as long as you are aware and you are able to tell the temperature of what's going on, uh, you can dictate what needs to be in and what actually needs to be thrown out. Because one thing that happens, this is the last point, one thing that happens uh, twice a week, the trash man comes to the house to pick up trash in the neighborhood. But I've never seen a trash man knock on the door and ask you, do you have any trash to put out? Mm -hmm. But you won't know what needs to be put out if you're not aware of what has tried to sneak in. Mm -hmm. Now y'all know pastor is a pastor. You <laughs> oh, I got one more point. All right. Uh, Owens. I would say, I would say, you know, to parents as school is coming to an end, to take the time, um, as Pastor Jay was saying, in terms of becoming aware, but talk to your child, find out one thing that they are interested in that will allow them to continue to grow throughout this summer, but also allowing them to stay connected to their inner child self. Thank you for sharing that. Aisha Pugh. I would definitely have to say um, just to continue to build connections with your children um, and embrace them, embrace them and, and learn and be aware as everyone is saying um, uh, of who they are and encourage them, encourage them to, you know, come forth and, and com continue to communicate with you, encourage them to, you know, live their, their best lives and, and, and certainly uh, within the boundaries and parameters that you taught them to, to do so. But um, I would definitely say um, those through those couple things are some some things that I I would definitely um, recommend. You know, just building those connections, embracing your children, encouraging them to you know to be the best that they can be. Dondre, yeah, I would um, I would absolutely say that there is a difference between our passion and our purpose. Um, our passions serve us, but our purpose serves others, and. As an actor, my passion has really served me, but my, my passion 
grew a platform. And so this platform that I got from walking out this passion, what do I now do with this platform? I know many people who are greatly accomplished in life, but are still walking around extremely empty. And that's because they haven't figured out that the key to life isn't accumulating all of these things for yourself. It really is about being able to serve other people. We were built to be of service. And so when we're constantly serving ourselves, we're, we're trying to figure out, why, okay, wow, I'm, I'm, maybe I'm not feeding myself enough. And the key truly to living a balanced life is grabbing a hold of those things that we garner for ourselves, but then breaking off a gigantic piece of what that is and being of service to other people. My father wasn't in my life to teach me how to be a man. And so the pain in my life produced this purpose to teach males how to matriculate into manhood. So vigorously walk out your passion, but then sift through your pain in order to discover your purpose. That was a mouthful. And I hope that each of you have had an opportunity to really hear what our guests have said today. When we come back after the break, I'm going to do my reflection. Verizon just gave us all a brand new iPhone 13. We've been customers for years. We got iPhone 13s too. Switched two minutes ago, literally right before this. iPhone 13 on us on any unlimited plan for every customer. With plans starting at just $35. All on the network more people rely on. Love our new Alexa. It's a Buick. Yeah, Alexa. Buick. Alexa. It's a Buick. It's an Alexa. It's a Buick. It's an Alexa. Coach, that's a Buick. That's an Alexa. The Buick Enclave with available Alexa built. Welcome back, everyone, to A Balanced Life and navigating family, learning how to communicate and seeking out avenues and opportunities that allow you to not only be engaged as an adult, but also how do you help your man child become that source of light for himself, teaching him what is his purpose, what is his passion, giving opportunity for clarity, communication, and open dialogue and conversation is not easy. One thing that we all can say and that we know is family and dynamics can be quite tricky. So how you approach them and engage in them is literally a tightrope. As you are discovering how to help your child become sensitive to the ways of the world. I mean, we've had so much tragedy these last several months and we're gonna be talking to our kids throughout the summer as it relates to how do we deal with the Uvalde? How do we deal with the Buffalo? How do we deal with tragedy that has taken place You know, several years back in Miami? How do we deal with this pandemic? Our children are hurting and they need people to talk to. So before your child takes that opportunity to seek people outside of their family, outside of individuals who are influences in them lives in their lives i'm going to start that over it's 5207 before our children take it upon themselves to start reaching out to other people give them an opportunity to talk to you set the stage and set the tone for an atmosphere of open engagement transparency and honesty I promise you, these are the pillars upon which you will want your children to be able to stand upon and engage. It will be the toolkit that they will use to navigate all the other days, situations, and circumstances in their lives. Thank you so much for watching our show today. Bye now.